This episode of the Fiction Writers Podcast is brought to you by The Novel Notebook. With each character and each setting, hundreds of details must be compiled and organized, far too many for a writer like you to keep them cataloged in your brain. The Novel Notebook provides the answer. Visit www.fictionwriterspodcast.com slash novel and quickly discover how to organize your materials and take your novel to the next level. Welcome to the Fiction Writers Podcast with Lana McCara, where you will discover tips, tricks, and ideas for fiction that is hashtag unputdownable. Here you'll find new energy, new perspectives, new resources, and new ideas that will spark your creativity into a blaze of brilliance. It's easier than you think. Be sure you visit our website at www.fictionwriterspodcast.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, get out your notebook, tune in, and let's get started. Welcome to the Fiction Writers Podcast. Tips, tricks, and ideas for fiction that is hashtag unpedanimal. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Nancy Chadwick to the podcast. Nancy grew up in a northern suburb of Chicago where Deer Deerfield is marked by four corners and making connections to it and to home would later become the subject of her writing. Nancy got her first job at Leo Burnett Advertising Agency in Chicago and after working a decade in the advertising agency business, she moved to international corporate banking. Nancy's writing inspiration comes from her years of living in Chicago and in San Francisco and meandering through the woods of any forest. Her essays have appeared in The Magic of Memoir, Inspiration for the Writing Journal, Adelaide's Literary Magazine, and blogs by the Chicago Writers Association, Write City, About Write, and brevity. Her memoir, Under the Birch Tree, and her debut novel, The Wisdom of the Willow, are published by She Writes Press. Welcome, Nancy. Hello. Good to be here. Oh, I'm just del delighted to talk to you because the relationship between memoir and fiction is so close and yet distinct mm -hmm. <laughs> that I'm, I was really happy that we could talk about that. I haven't addressed that at all in the podcast up to now. So what started you writing the memoir in the first place? Well, um, I had actually probably secretly been writing memoir for quite a number of years. Um, you know, I, I had quit work full time uh, to try to figure out what the next chapter was for my life. And um, in doing so, I, I had always been kind of a closet writer for many, many years. So keeping journals and little experiences. So when I quit and kind of was very reflective about the years past, um, I started writing um, my experiences and how I felt about things. And so I could kind of get a timeline going. Um, and then I thought, well, why don't I kind of put this into a book? So I started uh, essentially learning what memoir is. It was all self-study, basically, um, you know, just just reading other people's memoirs, instructional videos, etc. But I knew a memoir is not an autobiography. There's totally two separate entities. So um, I had labored over my memoir uh, for many years. I had received critiques about them. Um, you know, what, in terms of the direction it should go into and so forth. So what I ended up was a very thematic story. Um, traditionally, memoirs are about a single incident or an experience. You started off in this place, something happened to you, and this is how you transformed or changed. Um, yes, those concepts, that storyline is embedded in my memoir, but it t took on a different level, a different meaning, where I used um, the birch tree as a metaphor for finding home and discovering those connections. So it does start the, off in the beginning of the book with a, a little bit of a story about a birch tree, and I discovered bunnies underneath, um, which, which set off the whole story about being displaced and finding my home. So... It was kind of a labor of love. It went through many edits uh, to try to really get that nugget of gold about really what um, my story was about. 
Very interesting. So what is the difference between a memoir? You said it is a it is a story of some change that begins with a definite point. But what is an autobiography then? An autobiography is simply a recounting uh, of experiences of your life in different um, phases and decades that you go through and what happens to you. A memoir adds many layers to those experiences. It is reflection of your your yourself now versus your younger self then. It is the life lessons that you learned in retrospect. Um, and it's also the takeaway. What, what have you learned? What can your readers take away um, from your story? Um, memoir is, is deep thinking. Um, it is delving into the mind of you, um, and you are a character. Um, it's learning more about yourself, your way of thinking, how you came about to be um, perhaps a very introverted person, um, how you came to uh, be drawn to art or photography. So it's really a deep dive into who you are, unlike autobiography, where it's just a recounting of, um, of your life. I see. So a an autobiography is a chronology that goes by the years and just gives the events of your whole life. Correct. I remember my my children, I would en encourage them to read biographies and when they were, you know, in school. Uh, I homeschooled my children for 25 years mm -hmm. and they were they got so discouraged and upset with biographies because the people always died at the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. We don't want that. No. But, you know, um, but memoirs, sure. I mean, I I think the memoirs generally are um, are are uplifting because you, a lot of uh, memoir writers kind of start at a certain point that may be really low for them. But you see, you see the journey, you see what they learned. And then, but in the end, there is some transformation and something that a reader um, can can take from. Yes, this is a great way to, to define it. And so, thank you, Nancy, for sure. Oh, sure. I fill it with that. I have ghostwritten three or four memoirs, um, but two of them were prescriptive memoirs. Are you familiar with that? No, I am not. Unfortunately, no. So I, I wasn't really clear on the distinction between just a memoir and a prescriptive memoir until we've been talking today. <laughs> this is really an awesome conversation. Yeah. Prescriptive memoir is when someone has a coaching business or uh, talks about leadership, makes speeches about leadership or something like that. They have a process that they're actually marketing to help other people. And so they take their life story through the process. Oh, okay. You can see how they used it in their life. Mm -hmm. It is more of a step-by-step -step how you can do it too. And, and with one of them, we actually had exercises at the end of each chapter, but it was all about his life and what he went through in these various uh, episodes, mm -hmm. you know, of, of his process. So a prescriptive memoir is almost coaching. It's just like you're using your life as an example. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, yeah. And that's certainly one way of, of you can almost take that into um, more of a deeper, into, um, deeper dive into memoir. You know, this is, and this is how I did it. You know, use your memoir as an example. And, you know, um, which... You get a big audience, a big readership, because if there are some that are in that similar situation, hey, they want to read about how you got out of it or what worked for you and what didn't. And, you know, it 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 makes for a really good read. Yes. And it, it's meaningful. So much yes. more than, than just reading someone who had a psychology class and try right. it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But it's yeah. interesting when I go to the bookstore and um, I will look at the books on the table or, the, you know, in autobiography and memoir. And it just seems that a lot of 
um, celebrities and, and well-known people are writing memoir when really they're autobiography. You know, you pick them up and they're pages and pages and they love to call their autobiography a memoir, which, you know, I... Yes, there could be some chapters and so forth that are highly reflective and and things that they've learned and sh and they're sharing, but basically they're autobiography. So, um, you know, sometimes there's a fine line, but, you know, after you read it, you can really see, well, was this just a recounting of the life or did I get something out of it? Was it relatable to me? Yes, yes, right. One's more like a history lesson and the yeah. other lessons learned. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's terrific. I love this uh, because this is a shady. <laughs> yeah. And and definitions in, in writing these days are getting grayer and grayer. Yes. Yes. They cross over and people are making up their own genres where they're yeah. putting two together and, and all right. the stuff is happening. So thank you for this. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Yes. Oh, yeah. And memoir can also be, you know, if you're just starting out to write it, you want to write one, but it just seems so daunting. I mean, people say, oh, my gosh, where do I start? And I say, don't even think about your starting point yet. Just start writing, you know, start writing a chronology, maybe start like I did. And then as you start seeing a pattern, start whittling away and editing. Why did these things happen? How did you feel then? And how did you feel about it now? What did you learn? So just just dive in and start writing. Don't think about what's your beginning, your middle, or your end. Just do it. Mm, yes. Getting started writing is really great advice because the uh, intimidation of yeah. the blank page is, is real. That is real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did and you always, you know, I always say, Get get out of your headspace of well who who who's going to want to read my memoir you know I'm I'm among many others you know what's going to set it apart and you have to kind of get out of that headspace because your your life and your story matters what you have to bring to the table and to write about matters and if there's somebody out there who's going to read your book and relate to it and really connect with it. It makes it all the worthwhile. Yes, we all have something that we could help other people. Uh, yeah. we, and if we have a few years on us, we've experienced a lot of things that younger people, you know, may struggle with. And we've got, yeah. got some insights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you do spontaneous writing like in the morning to sit down and start to write anything that came to your mind or did you have structure? Um. Uh, gosh, that's a good question. I did have spontaneous writing. Um, yes, I would sit and I, if I just had an idea in my mind, I would just just start writing. You know, I, I wouldn't even edit myself or do sentences or anything. I would just keep writing. But, um, you know, I, I on, the, on the flip side, I would have an idea um, and then I would probably make time. I'm, I'd probably write like a topic sentence, what it is, what I want to write. And then I kind of go away and come back and then I would have the structure and start writing. So um, it, it depends, you know. Yes, we need both. We need both spontaneity and structure. Yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because sometimes you never know when that's going to hit. You may be out for a walk and you may see something like a really awe-inspiring thing. And it may just click for you, the color or the sound or whatever. And it may just, you know just click on something you you think of to write about. Yes, yes. Being aware of your surroundings is such a huge benefit for being a writer. Um, a lot of people who don't write, they just have an idea. You sit down at the keyboard and things just pop into your mind. But actually, we're collecting. All right. Time. Yes, we are. Oh, yeah, yeah. And actually, that's how my jump from memoir to fiction kind of happened. Um, it was very organic. Um, you know, I think I, for years, I'd been a personal essay, the memoir writer. Um, and as a writer, I thought, well, you know, what's my next step? What's what's after this? Um, I thought of fiction and I thought, whoa, you know, fiction, that's daunting. 
You have to make all this stuff up. You have to make up your characters and your plot and this and that. So I kind of backed away. But as uh, as a person that enjoys the natural world, I write a lot about the natural world using our senses and our awareness and and connecting to it. Um, I went on my usual walk in the morning one day. I veered off a usual path that I take onto a, a short bridge. Um, and I must have been at the right place at the right time, standing on the top of the bridge. And the sun was beaming down on the water underneath, and it just sparkled. And it just reminded me of diamonds sparkling. So I created this whole fictional story about a little boy by, you know, by the banks. He's kind of poking the ground with a stick. And so I had all these kind of thoughts in my mind, and I went back home. And I wrote my my first short story that got published. So um, it it was about uh, a little boy who goes to see when the sun kissed the river and um, and all his experiences and and things that happened there. So um, from there, that was kind of a stepping stone to writing fiction. Very interesting. Yeah. So when you got ready to write your novel, mm-hmm. what was it that gave you the courage to make that leap? Um, The first thing I I usually do when I'm writing is um, develop characters because I characters in my mind of of who they are, what they physically look like, their personalities, and maybe the role in the story. So I devise a whole list of, of character profiles, basically. And from there, I can pull out um, a story. It's very simple, you know, um, this is what happens and then the next thing happens. So then I start thinking in in scenes um, and how things progress, very big picture. And I don't outline in detail till after the first draft is done. And I go back and I outline and I look at those scenes and I and I get more detailed into it. Um, but writing the first novel, I, I just had an idea in my mind. I, um, the wisdom of the willow was not, um, called that it was, um, called the fabric of our lives. And when I, I, the reason why I probably thought of that was there's a commercial for cotton called the fabric of our lives. And I thought, oh no, can't do that. I don't want people to think it's about cotton, you know, the book. So, so I changed it. Um, and then I kind of used the fabric of our lives a little bit and wove in the story. But um, it just took off. Writing fiction kind of um, took off. I enjoyed writing about four sisters um, and creating their characters in a relatable situation that readers could relate to uh, in a story that was um, a feel-good story. Okay. Wow. So... The age of these sisters, uh, what age and stage in life are they? They're in their mid forties. So, um, yeah, so they, they've gone through the college thing, the post-college thing. They might be looking at uh, a career change or, uh, marriage and family or no marriage and no kids. So they're kind of at an impasse here where, um, they've got some decisions to make. Uh, and and those decisions are are put upon themselves versus them, you know, um, having to look at a place that kind of reinvention or so forth. But things do happen; those changes happen. Yes, very interesting. I, I was thinking about Little Women, uh, where the girls are at home and you know, some yeah. young. Um, but looking at four sisters in in that stage of life, because that's when things either come together or fall apart. <laughs> sure. And for some they do and, and for some they don't. But there's an older sister who was kind of the um, uh, the caretaker of the other sisters. They're very close in age. And then there's a, a, a youngest one who kind of um, just faded into the background. You know, she was kind of always told what to do and how to do it. And, uh, so had a little bit of an identity crisis there, and but is very happy in her own lane, working, you know, in a small company, an administrative role, and taking care of her parents. Um, so there's a little bit of friction there between the sisters, um, yet the family unit remains very strong. 
Uh, the mother teaches them about wisdom and life lessons as they grow up under a willow tree. And that um, that that uh, concept of family and connection always remains with them. Okay, okay. So so I'm seeing a kind of a, a thread here. The first book, your memoir, was about a birch tree. Yeah. And then this one has a strong willow tree. So yes. you know a special thing about trees? I love trees. Uh, I've read books about trees, um, got it, getting into the science of it, how uh, they're all connected, you know, through very scientific. That's a whole nother, nother story. But um, there's a lot that we can learn from the natural world and being in it. Uh, um, and um, the birch tree was metaphoric. Um, I, I just loved it. It, it was a, a different look. Um, compared to all other trees, then you know the peeling bark and the leaves are slender and wavy, and there's there's poetry and literature about birch trees, and um, uh, the willow tree is metaphoric for how all those sisters work their lives. Um, an oak is, is a mighty oak, um, you know, it it's strong, yet a willow tree bends and sways, but it never breaks, and that's how all these the women are uh, in the in the story. So uh, they may bend and sway and have hardships, but in the end, they never break. Yes, yes. I lived in the Caribbean for 14 years. Oh, yeah. With, when the hurricanes came through, the palm trees would just bend. They would just bend. And, and they never even noticed when the wind stopped, they just stood back up. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yay. For some trees. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what do you prefer the memoir or fiction you know i will always be a memoir personal essay writer um it's kind of where i started what i studied where i learned the, the more um most experience um i have of writing um i like fiction um because I, um you know I do, I do like the creative aspect of it and creating my own characters um, and my stories are simple and, you know, not a lot of drama, not a lot happens, but enough to keep the, the story going. So um, I think my home will always be memoir and personal essay, but um, I do enjoy writing some uh, some short fictional stories. Mm -hmm. The one thing about <clears throat> memoirs and fiction for my, you know, for my own experience, I haven't written my own memoir. I've got sticky notes on the wall. <laughs> oh, that's a good start. Always start with the sticky notes. I think you've got something. Uh, with a memoir, do you, is this true for you? You have to be very careful that all the details are correct or are um, places. I, I, yes, there's certain caution and, and care there. However, this is a story from your perspective. This is how you took your own story, how you understood your story to be the people that were involved in your life and of yourself. So, um, you know, it's it's purely subjective. It's where you are, how you envisioned. Um, so in terms of the care and getting things correct, um, no, you're never going to get a, a piece of dialogue exactly correct. It's how you interpret it, how you heard it, um, as somebody else may have heard it differently. Um, but this is your story and how you uh, perceived it. I see. I see. Because I, I remember writing something about my life, showing it to my sister, and she did not remember the incident that way at all. Right. It me up a little bit like, no, that's what happened. You know? Right. Exactly. Well, who's to say what really happened, right? You know, there could have been a third person say, well, I didn't hear that, you know, at all. But it's according to you, and this is what you thought and believed, and it's your story. Yes, yes, absolutely. The one thing about fiction that I I do write historical fiction, which you have to be careful with those details at the history. Of course. But uh, when you run into a rough spot, I mean, in fiction, you just make it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always but in also fiction, you, I find that you have to really um, take detailed notes and of where you are and where you're going. 
because, you know, three quarters into the book may contradict what you started in the beginning. So, um, you know, you have to be very careful and, you know, you may in your head thought that your character's going in one direction um, when, in fact, by the end of the book, it kind of, you know, trailed where you didn't want that person to go. So you have to be very careful. Yes, those characters, sometimes they get ideas in their head. Yes, they do. And you got to be careful because sometimes they start talking to you and then, you know, want to try to shut them out. <laughs> <laughs> they just won't behave. They won't listen. No, they won't. No. Mm -mm. No, but sometimes you got to give them a voice. You, you figure, okay, it's time for the voice. Let's, let's, let's work through this. Yes, if we have to go back to the beginning and make some adjustments, you know, because yeah. uh, they get really stubborn, and if you don't let them do what they want, they don't play. They right. refuse to play. Yes, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think fiction writers uh, have to be really careful because the, the world we live in can be, you know, a little freaky. <laughs> yes, it sure can. Oh, yes. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay reality or something <laughs> right i think that's why i enjoy just writing simple stories um you know with good endings and something that you can just kind of you know take a deep breath and say oh that was a good story you know and not getting all you know psychological on you or anything and um deep or or whatever i you know we people have enough of that going on in our complicated world right now that um, I've always been a writer of the simplicity. You know, I write my blog and, and essays are about the simplicity in a complicated world. Um, and just taking a pause in life and, and self-care and just breathing and letting all the, that noise go and focusing on ourselves for a little bit. Yes, that's such good advice. Simple writing is good writing. Yes. Yeah. I had someone say to me, just recently, and he's got four or five published novels, mm. a lot of other material. He said, I just can't be as flowery and as poetic as these other guys. I love reading their work. I just can't do it. I said, simple writing is good writing. Don't it is uh, put yourself down. Yeah, no, not at all. Sometimes that uh, poetic and flowery writing um, can jump over into overwriting. Um, where you just keep layering and layering with words. And if you took stripped all those words, then you'd come down with really what you want to say. Um, I'm guilty of it, um, but that's all involved in the editing process, where you go back and just start stripping down your words um, and getting things a little more simple and to the point. Yes, beautifully said. So um, do you use beta readers to help you with that? Um, I have a, a couple of beta readers, um, but I, I really don't rely on them as much only because I don't, um, I don't know them. I don't, you know, haven't pursued that. I do rely on um, um, developmental editors, however. Um, I have one that I've worked with since um, The Birch Tree. And uh, so she's great. She knows my writing. So she helps with a lot of the development um, there. So I rely on her for that. Yes, it's so important to get another person's input. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. yes. And yeah. also, I put manuscripts, um, you know, the birch tree went into a drawer for a while. I didn't consecutively work on it because um, I just had to separate myself from it because it was all running together. So I put it in a drawer probably for, I don't know, at least a year, maybe a year or two. And when I picked it up, it it read so differently. So I went through the whole thing and revised it. Um, I did it with um, The Wisdom of the Willow. It was actually done before the pandemic. And I put it aside. And then when my publisher was a little more up to speed post-pandemic, I took it out and revised it and reworked it a little bit. Um, and then it was ready. So... Um, you know, don't, don't think that you have to work on manuscripts 24 seven, um, because it, it blurs I mean, it all runs together. It's not fresh. Work on another project and then come back to it. That is a professional writer's perspective right there. Yeah. So the beginning writers, they want to rush 
through it and rush to press. And the best thing you could ever do is just put it away, mm -hmm. let some time go by, come back with fresh perspective, and then take a look at it. You're actually working with a different part of your brain. Yes. When you come back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, you know, otherwise I have been so focused on my writing projects. Um, it it just lacks any creativity or originality or any appeal. So um, by putting it away um, and not even, I mean, there may be a couple of days, maybe even a, uh, well, few days where I don't write. I just don't write at all. Mm -hmm. um, I get busy doing something else. In the summer, I'll garden, you know, walk, bike, right, do something. Just get, get your mind on something else and then come back to it. Yes, yes. Oftentimes I have to leave the house just because yes. the computer has got a beacon call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how you want to just glue to that seat and just pick up where you left off. But yeah, it's kind of a conscious decision to to yeah. just um, remove yourself and go go do something else in a, in a different place. Yes, yes. To get your, your mind off of it and come back with fresh perspective. Yes. What's coming up for you? You got another book in the works? I do. Um, it's called um, Mercy Town. And the um, the short story, my first published short story called When the Sun Kissed the River, was developed into Mercy Town, which is now Mercy Town. Okay. Um, it is. Uh, it will be released by uh, She Writes Press in September of 25. Um, it is basically fast forward 10 years from when I wrote the short story and things have changed. Uh, the people have changed. They have grown. And there's there's a divided town in way northern Wisconsin uh, that experienced a, a an accidental shooting um, committed by a Native American. Uh, the town is divided, and it's really the story of how the town finds Percy oh. for the for the shooting. Very, uh, that's amazing. I, I'm totally in. Oh, <laughs> uh, good, good, yeah. Yeah, I'm pleased with how it's turned out. So I'm kind of going through some edits now, and uh, uh, so next uh, next fall, yeah, I'll be out. Yeah, good. So tell us how to get more. Do you have a website or? I do. I'm at nancychadwickauthor.com. Um, I also write on medium.com at, at Nancy Chad, C H A D, um, and I'm on um, Substack. My Substack is called. Uh, come sit a while. And uh, so a lot of my work and essays and news are, can be found in, in those three uh, writing platforms. Awesome. Awesome. Nancy, this has been great. Great. Good. Good. <laughs> Wonderful conversation. I knew it was going to be. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. And thank you for being with us today. My name is Lana McKeera. See you next time. Thank you for tuning into the Fiction Writers Podcast with Lana McCara, where we share tips, tricks, and ideas for fiction that is hashtag unputdownable. Remember to visit our website at www.fictionwriterspodcast.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Fiction Writers Podcast.